Hey guys, welcome back to another video. This is Gabe with Indigo Software, genuine Microsoft software for less. In today's video, we're covering a comprehensive guide to the new version of Outlook on Windows. We've covered the new Outlook version on Mac, and you can find a walkthrough for that in the description. Now, before we jump into the tutorial, if you're interested in purchasing Microsoft Office, Windows 11, Windows 10, Windows Server, remote desktop licenses, or a wide variety of other Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software, we'll put links down below. So without further ado, let's jump in. So the first thing we're going to cover is how to actually access the new Outlook. I have Office Professional Plus 2021 currently installed on this computer. You'll be able to access Outlook regardless of whether you have a standalone version or Office 365. If we simply type Outlook in the search menu, we can see the one highlighted with the word new. If you don't see that, here's what we can do. As we know, Outlook email and calendar is now included for free with Windows. Follow along with the prompts on this website if you don't already see the new Outlook on your computer. Now, following along with the prompts, New Outlook for Windows is available directly from the Microsoft Store. Okay, once we have it downloaded and installed, we'll go ahead and open it up. The first thing we'll be prompted for is to sign in with our email address. We can either create an Outlook.com address or we can use an existing Gmail, Yahoo, iCloud, etc. So I'll go ahead and use my business email address, which is set up through the G Suite. Now this brought me to a web. I'll go ahead and fill out the same information. So our email and password through Google in this case. And once you put in your password, we'll be prompted to allow Microsoft the control. So we'll hit continue and we'll hit allow and then we'll hit open Outlook new. Okay, I'm gonna select no on the optional data and we'll hit continue and it's continuing to get the accounts ready. And here we are, okay. We are now inside of my email address. Now in this guide, we'd like to give you guys both a tour of the application and also instruct you how to change some of the settings to better fit your needs or to make it more familiar with the older versions of Outlook, which we can do. So first we'll talk about the general layout. In the top right, we have tips. That's the little light bulb action. Here we can explore tips for Outlook. This is gonna help with productivity, personalization, et cetera. Next to that, we have settings. And here we have our account, general mail calendar and people settings, as well as our email signatures. Okay, to the left of that, we have notifications, which pulls up a pane on the right. And finally, we have this little icon here, which in my case, pulls up the calendar. But this is actually where you would also find Microsoft to do. Microsoft To Do is an application that is now exclusively available with the 365 suite. In my case, since I am not paying a monthly subscription, I don't have access to that, which is why I don't see it. Moving on to the left side here, we have our mail tab. Below that, we have calendar, people, and then we also have Word, Excel, and PowerPoint. Okay, so this is kind of like our navigation pane, pretty similar to the old Outlook. And then we have more apps here. And in my case, I can access OneNote. Now, again, depending on whether you have a 365 subscription, you may see OneDrive over here. You might see more apps over here as well. And then this is what it's actually going to look like when you first get into Outlook. So we can see we have this simplified version of the tabs and ribbons. So we have Home View Help. Then we have the View tab with its various settings and the Home tab with its various options. Now, if you want the more classic ribbon look, which we had towards the beginning of this video, drop this arrow down here and just select Classic Ribbon. Now, this is going to look a little bit more familiar and honestly it kind of just makes it easier to see all of our different options here so we have print snooze pin if i you know select an email for example i've got reply all report delete all these options are available without me having to like click little drop downs so i think this is a more intuitive way to use it uh, but if you like the simplified version there's no problem with using that as well all right, so with the basic layout of Outlook covered, let's go ahead and cover some of the most popular settings that you can adjust. All right, so we'll go over to the View tab first. And if we click on the View Settings, we have a few options underneath the layout and you can play with this for customization. Uh, but where we actually wanna focus here is Compose and Reply. In the previous versions of Outlook, the pop out to a new window reply feature would be on by default. In this case, it's not. So I've changed this to pop out to a new window. So I'll go ahead and show you guys both options real quick. So I hit reply and it pulls up a new window. Again, very familiar. And this brings up a ribbon of its own uh, with that setting off. And here's what the default setting looks like. So it gives us this option here. Again, not very intuitive. I like the, the pop out window better. It gives us the ribbon and the ability to work on it outside of that email thread. But whichever method you prefer, both are options. Also in the view tab, we have a setting called conversations. This is going to change how the emails are actually grouped. And so conversations and replies will be held within a thread. 
And the other option would just show the messages separately, which is more of a traditional email layout. For me, just to help keep things in order and not get things lost, I like to keep it as separate messages. So I'll leave that setting on. Another thing we can control here from the view tab is the density. And this again is more of an aesthetic preference, kind of makes it smaller or roomier. And I actually don't mind the um, roomy density setting. Another important setting we have, uh, we'll access the settings from the top right here. We'll go down to mail and under layout, the first option is for a focused inbox. So we have an option for Outlook to sort our emails based on what matters most, or we can select don't sort my messages. I'm gonna be keeping with this option, but it's gonna be aware of this because the sort messages into focused and other option may actually be set by default. All right, then last up, we're gonna cover a little bit inside of the calendar tab. So here I can see some upcoming video shoots and meetings and such. And so with these, I can just select the events and I could edit them. I could edit the information. Uh, do keep in mind, this is integrated with my Google calendar. So again, if we're operating through Outlook, but using a Gmail account, that will also work. And this is a pretty straightforward process here. We have edit, we have cancel. And then of course we can create a new event here in the top left, we can create mail or event. And then here I could go through and create and send out an event invite. All right, guys, that's going to do it for today's video. If you have any questions about the new version of Outlook on Windows, drop those in the comment section below and we'll get back to you as soon as we can. Again, if you're interested in purchasing genuine Microsoft software at a great price, check out Indigo Software. We'll put links down below. Any specific viewer, any specific video topic ideas that you may have are strongly encouraged. And again, a like and subscribe would be greatly appreciated as it helps to support the channel. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you guys next time.